What's up makers? I'm back with another review. Another laser review. Except this one's a little bit different. This time we're going small. That small. Today I'm putting together and reviewing the Atom Stack P7 portable laser engraver machine. That's their lingo on the box there. It is a 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter cutting area and uses a five watt laser in a very, very small and compact design. And the design is a little bit different than most of the lasers because it is a cantilever design, meaning that you have a gantry and you have one rail and the other side is just wide open. A little bit strange, but it kind of works. The laser comes in some pretty nice packaging. It's packed really well, but even the outside looks like finished retail packaging. Almost like you should be able to go into an electronic store if you haven't had any around anymore. And just pick one up off the shelf and bring it home. Hence the carrying handle. But the retail packaging ultimately doesn't matter that much. Let's take a look at what's inside. And when you get it all together, this is essentially what you have. It's so small that I could just kind of hold it and kind of play with it around like this. It almost feels weird with it being quite this small, but I think there is a pretty good use case for a laser of this size. There's a lot of parts of the world where space is at a premium and a lot of places where people might be living in a small condo or an apartment and they may not have a room or full shop dedicated to do some work like this. So a smaller format laser could be pretty useful. I don't necessarily advocate that you use this in your house or in your kitchen or you know, a, an adjoining room, but you decide what's best and safe for you. The point is that a small form factor laser might just be enough for some people. You could put it in a smaller corner of your shop. Um, I think it's the perfect size for like a hobbit hole. or something along those lines. This particular model that Adam Stack sent me out is the P7M40, which I think they have an updated model at this point, which is the P9. So if you go looking for this laser, that's probably the one that you're gonna probably end up looking at and picking up. But this is a slightly different category of laser compared to what I've already reviewed on the channel. Not really in the technology itself, it is still a diode laser. In fact, it's a five watt diode laser, but the structure and the form factor is a lot smaller. What does that mean? It means that they saved money on some of the production costs. Some people may not quite like that, but at a price range at around $179, it's not too bad. And the quality of the engraving is right up there with some of the more expensive ones. It is rated a little bit slower in terms of the speed. It is locked off at 3000 millimeters a minute, which is fairly slow, but I think you could push that a little bit faster. You just might have to adjust some of those settings in um, light burn. I'm not sure if you could do it in laser gerbil, which they recommend, but I've been running it with light burn, which I recommend. Some detailed specs on the laser is as a cutting area of 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters, which is roughly about 7.8 by 7.8 inches if you do that conversion. And it has a laser dot focus of about 0 0.02, which is fairly fine, but I think it still uh, may not be as good as some of the more higher end lasers. but. When you're doing some of these engravings, sometimes you can't tell unless you're doing really, really precision work. But if you're doing that kind of work, you might want to invest in a more expensive laser. Anyways, now this is made really, really well. You may not be able to tell it from pictures, especially if you're looking at them online, but the build quality is extremely, extremely good. This extruded aluminum is really strong. And even though the end might flex a little bit if you push down on it, but as the laser head is moving back and forth, I have not been able to tell any kind of difference in that quality going out there to the out there to the end. So I don't think it's going to be much of an issue. You just have to make sure that you're using a nice clean flat surface. Make sure that all of your work is as flat as possible on the surface itself, which is good practice anyways. And that's it. You should be pretty much good to go. The laser came with everything that you would expect a laser to come with at this point. It came with the tools to put it together and it came with a bunch of sample materials. 
such as some three millimeter plywood, some really thin acrylic to test with, and it also came with this little acrylic piece to focus the laser. And compared to a lot of other lasers, there is one thing I really do like about this one better, is that we have this nice fat knob right here. Sounds kind of gross, I know. It makes it really easy to loosen it up and move it up and down. You take your focusing stock, put it on top, lock it off, and you're good to go. Your laser is focused. When I first put the laser together, I thought I had everything correct. And I think I had one thing that wasn't quite right. And that has to do with the orientation of the belts. The belt for the gantry is already installed, but you have to install the one on the y-axis um, yourself. And you have to make sure that it's tensioned correctly. In fact, even right now, um, it probably needs to be a little bit tighter. And the tightening of the belt is a little bit problematic. If you're used to working with machinery like this, that's working with motors and belts, and you have good methods for tightening, um, let me know in the comments below if you have any kind of tips or tricks, but I'm probably gonna have to pull this back and try to tighten it even more. Um, my first couple tests that I ran looked good in terms of quality in a sense, but they were slightly blurry. And I think that's because of the belts being just a little bit loose. So that could be something you might have to keep a little bit more of an eye on if you choose to pick up a little laser like this. One small thing I wanna point out among a couple others with this machine is that they actually included a metal base to put down underneath the cutting material when you're using the laser. This is probably a very low cost for the company itself, but this is a big deal for a lot of consumers. In fact, I've had a lot of people contact me and ask me what I use on my surf because they see a nice grid layout whenever I'm showing the laser. Well, I'm lucky enough that I have a really large work surface from my CNC machine. And I've been using that as my general base for laser cutting. There are a lot of people that don't currently have proper honeycomb tray set up to go underneath their laser. It might be just using pieces of wood, which can kind of work, but it also presents a bigger fire hazard. So the fact that they included this, I thought was good. So good on you, Adam Stack, for, for helping out the consumer a little bit. But if you have a laser, you're looking at getting one, I would also recommend trying to either buy right away or upgrade to a honeycomb tray that will allow the laser to pass through the material better and not reflect back up. Doing so could char the bottom of your piece a little bit more. It could possibly induce the possibility of burning. And even more so, in some ways, is the reflection of the laser light coming back up off the reflective surface here, which is not good for our eyes. And it's just one of those safety things. Upgrade when you can. So for the wrap up, the Atomstack P7 is a great small form factor laser or a great entry level laser if you're not sure if this is a hobby that you want to pursue or want to know if this is something that you actually enjoy doing. Not a bad way to go, especially for an entry price around $179. They have some newer models that I would highly recommend checking out. This one is probably about a year old or so um, at this recording and I wasn't able to get a hold of the newer one. so. This is what I'm kind of showing off and showing the possibility in that form factor. Atomstack also has some larger form factor lasers as well. In fact, they have up to a 20 watt with a larger cutting area. I don't remember what the cutting area is. I think it might be like around 17 inches square. But I'll have a couple different links in the description. You can kind of check those out at your own leisure. So thank you for making it this far in the video. It means a lot that you've watched all the way to the end. I also have a lot of other videos in the back catalog that you might enjoy, so please go ahead and check those out. At the date of this recording, Geek Builders is celebrating its seventh anniversary. And if you've been a follower and watched for that long, thank you so much. I hope to be doing this for quite a while still. I'm, I'm enjoying it. And I do have a lot of other videos and other types of videos coming out, not just laser stuff. I have, my next couple of projects are actually woodworking related. So keep an eye out for those. Other than watching past videos, if you'd like to help support the channel, we have a Patreon with different level of rewards that you could check out. And we also have a shop with some maker themed and laser themed merchandise like this shirt here, because lasers are cool for you to check out at geekbuilders.net. I've done several of these laser reviews at this point. If there's anything that you would like to see in terms of comparison, speeds, or other details, 
let me know. I'm always looking for other things to experiment with and test with the lasers, aside from making cool stuff. So in the meantime, don't forget to design, make, and play. And I will see you in the next video.